Um, no listing shall be accepted by a broker that provides for a net return. That's that net listing, unless the listing agreement provides for a maximum commission to be paid. You have to write on the listing, net listing, $8,000 max commission so that everybody understands that. A written purchase agreement. When I have a written purchase agreement, I will get earnest money as the listing agent. When I receive the listing, when I receive the earnest money, I have two banking days, banking days, banking days to get it to the bank. Said it four times. It is not business days because business days and banking days are different. Columbus Day. Banks are closed. Businesses are open. All right. Um, I believe MLK Day. Banks are closed. Businesses are still open. All right. So I have two banking days to get that earnest money into my bank. Now, there has been a huge misconception here lately. So let's cover this just as, in the real world. In the purchase agreement now, it when the buyer offers, he offers earnest money, there is a new blank in the last year that says, he will give us the money within so many days of the seller accepting the offer, all right? This is to cut down on, oh, I'm gonna bring you an offer from Plainfield and bring you the earnest money and then we reject the offer. Now we've got your check, yada, yada, yada. So what they're doing because we're fat, dumb and lazy is they say, after you accept, then we'll get you the earnest money, all right? So there is a blank in our purchase agreement and that you can fill in four days, five days, one day, 12 hours, 18 minutes, whatever you want, as long as the seller accepts it. Do not confuse that delivery time frame with this time frame. This time frame says when I, as the managing broker, actually take possession of the earnest money, which could have been four days after the purchase agreement was accepted, I cannot hold the earnest money check in my pocket, in my desk, on, on my desk. I've got two banking days from the time I receive it to the time I deposit it in my earnest money account. Uh, deposit all the money in connection with the listing escrow account, deposit the money with whomever is indicated in the purchase agreement. Number two there, we can't actually say the title company holds the earnest money. We could say an attorney holds the earnest money. Theoretically, we could say the seller's grandmother holds the earnest money, if both parties agree, all right? So in the purchase agreement, we could say, someone else is going to hold it. Um, if the earnest money is anything other cash or it's equivalent, my seller has to accept that. Number of years ago, there was a buyer who offered up the deed to his Lincoln Navigator as the earnest money. He did not have a lot of cash and he was getting a 100% loan, so, for earnest money, he said, I'll let you hold the title to my car. Now that is one, obviously you can't put in the bank. The seller said, yeah, I'll take that. So we held the deed and when the deed or when the deal closed, the seller gave the deed back to the buyer for the car. The, all right, so I have seen it at least once be something other than cash. Um, the earnest money deposits other than cash is equivalent. 
All the money retained in the earnest money account shall be there until it's designated to be dispersed properly. So in other words, there was a, a case where a broker tried this. He took earnest money, didn't get this. This is, he put it in his earnest money account, which he is supposed to do, but then he took it out 10 days early and used it to pay his house payment and then put it back in. And they wrote this rule. It says, no, you can only take it out when you're authorized to take it out, i.e. a closing. Your closing will authorize you to remove the money from your earnest money and bring the check to the title company. Okay. So even though you, he, he, cause he tried to claim, I put it in my earnest money account. That's what I'm supposed to do. And you got to take it out prior to this law. It didn't say when you could take it out. So he took it out 10 days early. Cameron. Cool question. So. When you have an earnest money account, does it have to be like a whole separate bank account or if someone wanted to, couldn't they just like, quote unquote, like rename their savings, the earnest money account and basically just put it in their savings? It has to be a separate account that only earnest money goes into. I don't now, know, but like, I, what if I'm, like say they just have like, like they have like the checking and you have like your savings and stuff like that so what if they just put it just in their savings and they just strictly put earnest money in that well if they declare that account as their earnest money account yeah i mean let's say i had two accounts and all of a sudden i became a managing broker one day and i could go in and go hey i'm going to change the name of that one even though it's a savings account there's no rule that says it has to be checking or savings it just has to be a separate account it also has to be in an FDIC insured or a credit union insured entity. I cannot say the earnest money is my safe at home. No, it has to be an insured entity so that in case something happens, that money's cooked or safe, not cooked. That would be the bad thing. Um, yeah, so I could go in and go, hey, I've got that empty account that's been open for two years but there's nothing in it i'm going to now designate that one as my earnest money account and start putting earnest money in it yes i just can't put it in one that i've been doing deals out of the easiest thing is just open a new one all right and you have to identify it so that the commission knows that your earnest money account that way you can't pull that trick that you're trying to think about. Oh no, it's not that account, it was that account. So like mine are labeled TMG general account, TMG earnest money account. That's what the actual look look like. When I look at them online, they are labeled so that we know which one's which. Um, all monies retained shall be designated until the disbursement. Trying to figure out where the 60 day rule is coming in. Oh, there it is. Letter D is if I know that there is a party that is not going to or has no intention in performing, then there becomes a dispute over the earnest money deposit. So if the buyer says, I have decided I am not going to buy, I now know that one party is not going to perform. So that earnest money has got to come out of my account and go somewhere. And there are three places it can go. All right. It can either go back to the buyer or it can go to the seller. Or there's a third scenario. Number one on the screen there says, all parties have to enter into a mutual release, releasing it to one party or the other. So both parties can agree it goes to the seller or both parties agree it goes to the buyer. That's what number one's saying, a mutual release agreeing that it goes to one party or the other. Now, if there is a debate, the buyer says he wants it back and the seller says, he get, thinks he should keep it, there's a problem. 
and I cannot release the money until they agree. Whatever method, they've got to agree. So there's what they call a 60-day rule. The 60-day rule says this. If I can't get them to agree, I, as the one holding the earnest money, make a decision based upon the purchase agreement on who I believe should get the earnest money. And I would send that letter to both parties within six, or with when I know that. When they receive the letter, they have 60 days to initiate a lawsuit that stops me from doing this. If they fail to initiate a lawsuit and they don't respond within that time frame, I then do what at the letter said I was going to do. So let me make sure we're clear, all right? It can either go back to the buyer, we both agree. It can go to the seller, we both agree. If they argue, I then go, I think the seller gets it, so I'm gonna write you a letter saying, based on my belief, I'm going to give the earnest money to the seller. Your clock is now ticking. You have to respond to me in 60 days. And your only response is a lawsuit. And then the judge will tell us where the earnest money goes. If you fail to respond on day 61, I'm going to give it to the seller, which is what I told you I was going to do. That way I am not holding earnest money forever. All right, that way I'm not holding the earnest money forever while they argue back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. 